Kira, my name is Rob Beaglehall, um, and I'm a public health dentist in Nelson DHB. You can see that this uh, slide, I, I took this last week actually, and this slide was just outside um, Nelson, and it represents what I'm about to talk to you about today. So dental caries, uh, also known as tooth decay, and as we hear from our American uh, friends, also known as dental cavities. I'd just like to remind everyone that it's the most common cause, um, sorry, it's the most common preventable chronic disease we have here in New Zealand. It's also the most common preventable chronic disease in the world. It's either the first or second reason for children's admission into hospital, depending on which DHB we look at. It's a major equity issue. And sugar sweetened beverages are the leading cause of dental caries. It's not lack of fluoride, it's sugar sweetened beverages. And at the end of this presentation, I'd like us all to understand the importance of sugar sweetened beverages and teeth, and that teeth and children need to be at the forefront of any sugar sweetened beverage campaign we have here in New Zealand. Now, this, he may look um, familiar, this is my son, Eli. <laughs> He, he has great teeth. Uh, he has 20 teeth and he has no decay in his teeth at all. Unfortunately, he is not, um, un unfortunately, most people, or a lot of children in New Zealand, do not have teeth like Eli. This is a sad case. This is a three year old boy I saw last week in the dental department at Nelson Hospital. You can see he has some problems with his teeth. Those front four incisors have been totally decimated by sugar sweetened beverages. He has another four teeth that need to be extracted. So in total, this three-year-old boy is going to have eight of his teeth taken out under general anaesthetic. We know that 42% of five-year-olds in New Zealand um, have tooth decay, 42%. Now the problem about having sore teeth and tooth decay is that it's very painful for children. It's uh, detrimental to their learning outcomes. Um, this boy here hadn't been sleeping for two weeks. He's in pain, it's unnecessary, and it's inappropriate that we still allow this to happen on a daily basis in New Zealand. This is my reality on a Friday. I'm, I'm, going, I'm flying back on Thursday night from this conference. Friday morning, I'll be straight into my weekly general anaesthetic clinic. Every Friday, I see two to three children. This, this five-year-old boy, as you can see, had five of his teeth taken out. Every year, 7,000 children have a general anaesthetic for teeth-related illnesses. 7,000, that's a huge number. Each general anaesthetic um, costs between three and five thousand dollars. So it's a, it's a huge expense. The minimum of 20 million dollars is spent every year in the DHBs in New Zealand so for one reason, that's for taking out abscess um, painful teeth. Now I'm just using Coca-Cola as an example because it's so widely advertised, marketed and, and sponsored in New Zealand. I don't have anything personally, um, I don't have a personal problem with Coca-Cola. All I'm doing is using this as an example. So on, a, on an al analysis of the ingredients on a Coca-Cola bottle, we know that there's nine teaspoons of sugar in a can, there's 16 teaspoons in a 600 ml bottle, there's 40 teaspoons in a 1.5 litre bottle, and amazingly there's actually 60 teaspoons of sugar in a 2.25 litre bottle of Coca-Cola. I love this slide. This slide illustrates that out of 30,000 products on average um, sold in the supermarket in New Zealand, this highlights the top 10 selling items. Coca-Cola 1.5 litre bottle, number one. Number two, what is spaghetti? Number three, Coca-Cola 2.25 litre bottle. Well, I've heard that this has actually just moved up to number two, but I haven't got evidence of that at the moment. Number four, white toast. Number five, baked beans, also packed full of sugar. Number six, bananas. Number seven, more white toast. Number eight, Sprite lemonade, 1.5 litres. Number nine, Mollenberg toast. And number 10, interestingly enough, Coke Zero, which has no sugar in it. 
We've got this. This, this is not a joke. We've got this up on our, um, our board. I'd just like to read this out to you because it's so telling. For a better start in life, start cola early. How soon is too? How soon is too soon? Not soon enough. Lab tests over the last few years have proven that babies who start drinking soda during the early period have a much higher chance of gaining acceptance and fitting in. So, do yourself a favour. Do your child a favour. Start them on a strict diet of sodas and other sugary carbonated beverages right now for a lifetime of guaranteed happiness. This is from the Soda Pop Board of America in the 50s. Actually, we're, we're almost, I, I like the word happiness here because one of the um, sugar sweetened beverages companies here in New Zealand like to use happiness and choice as their byline. Oh, it might have been this one. <laughs> uh, I was at the petrol station last week and I couldn't help but help take a photograph of this here. I love barbecues, I love summer, I love beaches, I love happiness, I love choice. Um, the company has it and as we saw in the first slide, not only is, not only is, some, is the company um, sort of infiltrating our towns and, and um, villages around the, the country. Sorry, Mike. Move it up. I'll move it up. But they're also infiltrating the, our way of life in terms of beaches, summer, and. It's not on. Is this better? Is this better? Yes. Yeah. I almost have to kiss it. <laughs> um, wouldn't it be. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we could walk into the petrol station and come across a sign like this? The company wouldn't be happy, but maybe consumers would. Look, another very important thing, a message I'd like to get across is that most of my clients and, their, and the parents of the, the clients I'm extracting all these teeth from don't actually know how much sugar is in bottles. I think it's scandalous that in 2014 there's no warnings on these bottles. This is a 1.5 litre bottle. This needs a warning, it needs warning. This product contains 40 teaspoons of sugar on the back of it. Maybe one day we'll get to that point. Now a lot of people talk to me um, about acidity. Uh, acidity is a little bit complex, but I'd just like to explain it here. Basically the smaller the pH, the stronger the acid. So if we look at the top, we can see that water has a pH of seven, which is neutral. If we look down to the bottom, uh, we get a carb battery acid, which is one. I'd just like to point out a few uh, items in, in this, this graph here. If we start down the bottom, we can see that um, stomach acid and lemon juice and vinegar are about two. When we move up to Coca-Cola and Pepsi, this is 2.3. It's a pH of 2.3. And as we go up, we can see that the pHs increase. I'd also like to highlight um, diet Coca-Cola, because diet Coca-Cola has no sugar in it. We know that, there's no sugar in, in diet, any diet drinks. But what there is in diet drinks is phosphoric acid. And it's the phosphoric acid that some companies add, for some reason, to their products. And it's this acid that makes the product extremely acidic. Um, so diet soft drinks, although they don't decay your teeth, they actually erode your teeth. And it's called dental erosion. And we see plenty of cases of children and adults come to see us with their teeth that look like they've been dissolved, like they, they look like they've, they've been worn away. Now I've got this slide up here because ultimately sugar sweetened beverages, uh, tooth decay, obesity and diabetes, it's a political solution. On the top left here we have unfortunately Minister Ryle, he's come out and he's already said he, he categorically is against any tax on sugar sweetened beverages. He said it's not up to the government to be the nanny state, it's up to the individuals to make their own choice. And it's up to children to decide um, what they should and shouldn't, shouldn't drink. Um, interestingly enough, the very, one of the very first measures that the national government instigated um, was to remove the, the school, healthy school guidelines within three months of coming to power. Um, and the minister at the time said, it's not our right, it's up to children. Children should be able to decide, even though some of the children are only five years old. Now there's a lot of potential here in parliament um, I'm very keen to hear Minister Turia speak tomorrow about what she has to say on sugar sweetened beverages. The man down the bottom, Kevin Haig from the Green Party, has already uh, acknowledged that 
if they come to power, one of the, the policy uh, measures on the table will be a tax on sugar sweetened beverages. Annette King ha has fluttered up and down. Hopefully she will also be convinced that it's a very important measure that needs to be adopted. And it's up to us, everyone in this room, to actually lobby and discuss with their local members of parliament and, and, um, and others to highlight the importance of these measures. Now, the, the government has said that nothing is going to happen on the, on the, on the national level um, at the moment, so it's very frustrating for us working in, on the local level. I'd just like to talk to you about a few um, campaigns that I've been um, undergoing in, in Nelson, where I live. The photo on the left is my, my son's school gala. Um, ironically, the, the woman in the black and white t-shirt, which, which you can't see, is one of the local dentists. Um, I, spoke, I spoke to the headmaster about this at the school gala, and he acknowledges that uh, it's, it's, not, um, it's not a great thing to be selling at the school gala, and next year he's going to do something about it. The other thing I came across was a subway uh, lunch order that um, the primary school children are allowed, uh, allowed to have each week. When I noticed the, um, the options, I could see down the bottom um, milk, chocolate and milk strawberry. And when I pointed out to the headmaster that there's the same amount, almost the same amount of sugar in chocolate milk or strawberry milk as there was in a soft drink, he immediately got out his black pen and crossed it out. So now the 480 students in, in the, his school don't have the option of sugary, the sugary drinks, except for juice. So it was just an example of what can be done on the, on the local level with one, 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 one conversation. I next moved on to the Nelson City Council. Um, that's a photo of me and that came along in the newspaper the next day. So what I did, I went along to the open forum at the council and I requested that the Nelson City Council um, develop a pol policy on sale of sugary drinks from council facilities and events. I started the talk with a bottle, an empty bottle of um, sugar sweetened beverages which was packed full of 40 teaspoons of, of sugar. I then passed round some rotten, de decayed teeth that that morning I'd actually, <laughs> I'd actually extracted um, and passed it around. It was a very effective uh, measure um, and there was a lot of debate, obviously. Um, and what ended up happening, they, there was so much debate that they decided they couldn't um, initiate anything at the moment, so they decided that they were going to vote on the measure a month later. I did a little bit of lobbying, made a few phone calls, spoke to a few sceptical uh, councillors about nanny state and enforcement and all, all, all the normal issues. And on the day of the vote, I tallied up and I, I thought I had um, seven votes to five. It turned out that two of the people that were going to vote for the measure were councillors who had children. They were away on school holidays. So the vote went 5-5. Five, five. So unfortunately, the, um, that request stalled. Um, although I just had a, a phone call yesterday and they, they've asked me to come back next month to try again. So hopefully Nelson City Council will be the first council in New Zealand to have a sugar sweetened beverage policy. I love this photo. This photo I took outside the dental department's staff cafeteria. <laughs> I, I'd actually just finished, a, uh, finished the day pulling out uh, teeth and I got this. I was so shocked that this galvanised uh, me into action. So what happened next was I spoke to the chief executive officer, CEO, um, about this and I said it was quite ironic that in the morning I'd been taking out teeth and here we are, we have a sugar sweetened beverage company delivering their products to the hospital. And I said I highly recommend that he has a, a, po a policy on sugar sweetened beverages. So he asked me to write a paper which I did, and then last week, on Monday, the executive leadership team of the hospital discussed the paper, and they had a vote. And lo and behold, they voted for the policy. So from March the 1st, Nelson District Health Board, Nelson Marlborough District Health Board, will, will be the first DHB in the country to have a sugar sweetened beverage policy.
Um, and uh, so hopefully this will act as a catalyst. There's no reason that why other DHBs, especially the big Auckland ones up here, why you guys can't initiate a, a similar policy. It didn't take much. All it took was, um, I guess, some passion and some, and some energy and, and talking to the right people at the right time. We all know who this is, the past captain of the All Blacks. All Blacks. <coughs> Uh, the All Blacks, for some reason, enjoy a close relationship with some sugar-sweetened beverages um, companies in New Zealand. Um, what, what I'd like to say is that I think it's totally inappropriate that we have um, All Blacks uh, endorsing um, Coca-Cola, Powerade and, and others. And what I'm suggesting here is that sugar-sweetened beverages basically need to rep represent the tobacco um, control campaign. At the end of the day, there's no real difference between sugar sweetened beverages, alcohol or tobacco in terms of the way we need to effectively deal with them. There needs to be taxation and, and I, I suggest that the, the, the taxation of 20% that's been suggested is on the low slide, side. I think we need to go for 50% taxation um, to make it um, effective. We know that there's, we live in um, difficult times the taxation would obviously raise a lot of um, income and it would also have a, a huge impact on lowering the consumption of sugar sweetened beverages. We also need to limit advertising bans, sponsorship bans and limit the availability. The head of the Nelson School Boys, Nelson College Boys um, volleyball team um, was a patient of mine uh, a month ago and he said that they'd been approached by McDonald's whether they'd like some sponsorship uh, for their, for their t-shirts. And he was against it, but he, he took the money because no one else was going to um, tackle the issue. So what I'm suggesting is there needs to be a lot tighter uh, regulations around advertising and sponsorship. And of course, the availability, we know just like tobacco and alcohol, we need to limit where these products are sold. In summary, I'd just like to say that oral health, it's critical to general health. If you have sore teeth and missing teeth, you cannot be deemed healthy. Dental caries is the most common chronic disease in New Zealand. Dental caries are, is also one of the most common reasons for children's admission to hospital, and it's extremely expensive to treat. We know that. Sugar sweetened beverages are also the leading cause of tooth decay. And again, I'd like to reiterate that I believe teeth need to be at the forefront of any sugar-sweetened beverage campaign that we have here in New Zealand. I'd just like to finish with a slide. Um, I jumped, uh, jumped over the fence and um, defaced their sign and took a photograph of it. But I remember uh, the Simon Chapmans of, of the uh, 80s and 90s who, who did the Bugger Up campaign. And I'd like to suggest here that we also engage in a similar campaign around New Zealand. Thank you very much.